I'm very happy to see all of you here because I think it is showing that you are interested to talk about the meaning of the education. So many people wonder that it must be so easy to be Minister of Education in Finland because everything is done already. But unfortunately, that is not the case. It is really important to say that we have so much to do, even at the moment, more than ever. You know that we've been doing a good work. Amazingly, politicians, can you imagine, they did make a right decisions in the late 60s. They locked themselves in the cabinets for two weeks and they came out by bringing out the idea of a uh, new Finnish comprehensive school. Basic school, equal to everyone, free to everyone, universal to everyone. To make sure that education is a basic right to everyone. It doesn't really matter what is your background. Everybody can get to school. And I think it is an amazing idea that we definitely thought that equality and equity can be the crucial values when we talk about education. And if you look at what have happened almost in 50 years time, basic school gonna have a birthday in this decade, 50 years anniversary. I must say that I'm very, very happy that we once had enough vision all together as a nation. We share together with a different political uh, point of views, but we came together and we shared the idea of a basic school, equal to everyone. And that idea have actually brought us such a wealthy, wealthy society where we all can live in. And I think it has been the crucial uh, and the key factor to success. If you noticed at least some of the Finns staying here today, they have noticed that when you ask Finns what has been one of the most successful things this nation have ever created or lived through or experienced, what has been the decades which has, have shaped the Finnish way of thinking more than ever. I'm very happy that everybody has always just the one thing to notice and it has been a Finnish basic, basic school, the born of Finnish basic school. So I think the most important resource, resource what this nation has is actually know-how and that know-how is created by a quality education and that has brought us in the situation that right before Christmas we got the OECD's uh, research results which were saying that Finland of all the countries in the world have most successful nation because in fact we were most skilled people in the world and if you look at those results you notice that it is not a miracle it is not a coincidence that that happened it's because of the fact that all those people who once had a possibility to go to basic school comprehensive school to everyone, started in 70s. They were actually better than anyone in the world. Their skills were better. And that has created such a strong know-how to our nation. And I'm very proud to say that we did not need to have a lot of oil. We didn't 
need to have a minerals because we had each other and we wanted to benefit of the whole potential of the nation. We wanted to give everyone possibility and right to go to school. So, listeners, that would be easy if this would be the case. We would be very happy to say that we've been doing excellent work for 50 years and we can go on with the same track. But then we would fail to notice what happens in the society. Unfortunately, we have a lot of big challenges. I'm very, very worried about our youngsters. Because the same young result actually showed that all the others are so skilled in Finland, but only the group of people age of 16 to 19, they did not do good. They did not do good. So now we have a question again at the table that can we do anything or are we in the crossroad to say that, well, all the others here had a possibility to go to basic school, have enormous skills, be talented, and the young generation will be left over because their uh, results, their learning results are coming down. So, in fact, the big question is after uh, autumn's visa that we can say that we are still on the top of the education, but in fact we forget that we don't make these kind of uh, researches to show for the others that we're doing a good work. We are showing these results that we know if we are still in the right track. And the problem is now that the young generation is giving up sort of way. So what is happening if our young generation does not want to show their competence? If they don't want to show their competence, whether we have a PISAR results or TIMS or whatever results or national inquiries and so on, if they don't want to show their competence, so what's wrong? And I think that is the day's most important question, that how we can motivate young people to be interested to learn. It's starting from each other. We cannot help that. So we need to get motivation back to young generation. And I'm not really worried about our PISA results only because of the learning results. But the one fact which we did not notice by the nation is in fact that we did not do good at all when we talk about uh, about the issue if the school is attractive if the school is a place where everybody feels that they are uh, feeling good so well-being of the students in the school is badly forgotten and I think that is really sad that we are one of the nation which has a lot of things to do to that matter. So in fact, therefore I believe that we are in the crossroad. We can have a good basic school, definitely. But we are not going to have an excellent basic school anymore for tomorrow's kids if we don't do anything. So we don't need to do anything new. We have to get back in the tracks we once decided to go on. And therefore, the basic school's main idea to talk about the equity and equality is still a very, very important message. Think about the 5% the, the, the of the best performing students and the 5% of the weakest performers. 
are having already seven years difference in their learning. If we guys think <coughs> that this is possible here, think about how big differences other countries are having. Because we are still performing in OECD uh, results as a country who have really, really small differences caused by socioeconomic backgrounds. One of the smallest, we are in the top of that, no differences if you look at it in the large scale. So the other issue is differences between schools. Unfortunately, equality does not mean that sooner or later we have a better or worse schools. We've been one of the generation which has excellent schools. It doesn't really matter where these schools are located. So nowadays we have turned into the situation that it, it starts much up. And I'm very worried about those uh, areas where we have lower education background, education level. Those areas where we have a lot of unemployed, where we have a high rate of unemployment, where we have a lot of immigrants. Because in fact these challenges are facing, uh, faced every day in the school life. Schools are as good as always. Teachers are the same, but the surroundings where we have schools, they differ a lot. And because of those facts, we challenge a lot of different uh, challenges in everyday school life. Re refer referring to those circumstances where the schools are working. And this is one of the issues that we cannot make sure that this can continue. Therefore we want to support a lot more those schools which are having a big challenges. Because sooner or later we will end up in the situation, if we don't do anything, that our parents are starting to shop different schools. That would be horrible, because if you look at what happens in the world. So, let's get back in the basic schools' best key values and make sure that we also have the politics of education doing the work along those principles we once set up together. So, dear listeners, I'm not going to give up. I'm very confident that we can fix these challenges we're having. And therefore I launched six weeks ago Big Process Basic Schools Future. So what is the basic school like? You know, we are not working in the surroundings where, for example, already by the door there would be some guy collecting all the mobile phones or there would be announcements in the door please switch off all your electronic devices but unfortunately even though we have a really excellent schools really excellent teachers who can benefit of the digital possibilities still in the large scale our schools are not living in the digital service society, unfortunately. So therefore we have to see the possibilities what which we can benefit. The young people are born to that society. It is impossible to say them that, you know, please do not do the things what you are used to do. It is not possible because they are GZ natives in the way. So we have to get this thing done. The other important issue is that we cannot carry on in the same way with the school classes, the physical environment where we are studying. It's not from this day. I think something must be really wrong 
wrong. If my school class, your school class, my parents' school class, and my, my parents' parents' school class, which was actually in Karelia, the Russian site which we once lost, all these pictures of those school classes are the same. With decades we've been going on, not seeing that the physical environment where we are studying is important too. And I hope that we can give a better heritage for the next generation by seeing that we need to do something to think that the tomorrow's schools can be a bit more updated than they are at the moment. I think all the adults have been seeing enormous change in the working uh, environments, you know, in the last decades. And finally, back to the pedagogy. We cannot continue this way. If I have, think about, I just got the newest results. One of the research, researcher re researching uh, motivation of young people came to me less than three weeks ago and said, Krista, think about our upper secondary school students. Think about them. Her results showed that only 20% of the upper secondary, school, upper secondary school students, the universal upper secondary school students, are getting excited once every week. So 20% of the students in the upper secondary school are getting excited about something once a week. Think about what the 80% of them are thinking. When we can get them excited every third week or what. So this is the important issue that we need to see that with the today's pedagogy we cannot change the world of tomorrow. So therefore we need to do something. And therefore I launched the big project by saying that let's fix, let's fix the basic school's future today because we can do it. The next window is open in 10-15 years time when we're going to update all the learning plans again. So I'm not going to be a politician who is hiding in the closet. I think we have to fix this and I hope that the whole society will be on board. So this is a third coming of Finnish Basic School and I definitely think that all the other countries are coming to see what we are doing. Finally, dear listeners, I think that our parents are wondering so much what kind of heritage they can leave for the next generation. They are planning to have enough money to give to their kids. They are thinking, you know, that maybe my car can be left, you know, when I'm not existing anymore. How about the house or some cottage? So many people fail to see that the best heritage we can leave for the next generation is actually good education. And as a minister of education, I've been wondering, should I educate our parents or should I educate our kids? Because if I educate our mums, our learning results will be eventually, even though I wouldn't like to, to see it that way, because I definitely believe in equality. But in fact, still it is so that if mum has gone to upper secondary school, eventually we can estimate better learning results to the next generation. The second thing is that right before Christmas we got the new research knowledge which said that even though we Finns, the crucial thing is that we, we count on our education system, we have a common trust to the education politics. So no matter what happens, we count on our schools, our teachers, our students. But in fact the problem is that we fail to see that in fact our parents are in the crucial role if our students can be motivated or not. We just got the newest results that only those 
kids whose parents have been uh, having, uh, up, uh, having a higher education. They are the only ones who are having a strong, positive attitude towards the school. Think about those schools uh, who have a lot of uh, kids who are leaving from their houses with the idea that, hey, it doesn't really matter what happens in the school. School sucks. So how can teachers ever make it different? And this is the question which we should think, how to turn attitudes in the society more, more positive towards the school. So therefore, I think it is possible to talk about the heritage we want to leave for the next generation by believing in the education. As a Minister of Education, I know that there is no better place to learn than in the school. Thank you.